All right, so how are you all doing? We're hoping well on that in today's video. Once again, continuing on with the theme of the Tommy L showcases and also using him as an association for other characters since he is an Archangel and he does have access to the Grace effect. And I still have a couple more characters I want to do, but today, of course, we're going to be showcasing the Dien and his Grace, probably one of the more powerful Graces we've had in the game. If the hero is attacked during the enemy's turn, immediately recovers 30% of damage taken. If taking damage twice or more from skills of the same enemy in the same turn, restricts all skill effects, including ultimate moves of that of enemies for two turns. Now, I don't know if it's maybe just me, but this first half of the grace effect, he could have easily have been given that and been just as strong. But this second part is so unnecessary, but so, so powerful at the same time. Pretty much like a replica of the Melia passive in a way. That unit is honestly so, so fun. Still have a couple more showcases to do of him in the front as well, but really, really, really wanted to see how he works with Dian since Dian can struggle just a little bit tanking in the first half, but once you end up getting a built up, she is so insanely powerful and matches that of like Trader Meliodas and other really strong units. Wanted to use her, of course, with the King as well. King Shield obviously going to give a whole bunch more survivability to the team. I feel like this should go pretty well. Been a hot minute since I've used the Dian, and let's jump right into it. First opponent here and starting off with an unknown team this could this could definitely be scary at least they are using the festival melon is a little bit less annoying to deal with than the true sticker one and how do we want to start off definitely want to throw out these two cards that's going to be our oh that is going to be very very helpful i wasn't too sure about the elaine since there can be just certain matchups where she can get next to no use but having the buff disable is going to help out and probably end up winning us this match here probably should have used that card before the king buff as well since once shock's applied you do end up dealing extra damage if you're a fairy character and this card here i wasn't too sure increases the hp related stats of all allies by five percent for two turns and when attacked instantly recovers 20 percent of damage taken so i figured that along with the time you'll brace you end up having dn just recover insane amounts of health but not too sure if they'll end up stacking or how that'll work the freeze definitely annoying though hmm do we end up having king frozen here as well just so that we can get or we could rush the Dianel. Rather do that and have King throughout the two attacks, just in case I don't end up rocking Revive on anyone. Or I mean, we probably could have thrown that out, proc Revive on someone and killed another character, but just to play it safe, we'll go for that one there. Level 3 Pulverized card on Dianel definitely end up taking someone out, obviously, other than the Festival Merlin. Her ultimate as well does do pretty good damage. Unfortunately, she isn't the highest level Festival of mine. By the time she rolls around again, I still have a couple more coins, so... We'll end up getting a 6-6 six, six adventure. I actually think she's my lowest festival at this point in time since King has returned. We do have him 6-6 six, six. now. Let's go. Let's go 1 and 2. I'm pretty confident that we can end up killing Amelia with this one here. Using this card first just because it is a little bit stronger. Hopefully prop revive. Yeah, look at that. And then we can probably finish off with this second card. Okay, so a scary team for us to burst. Got it out of the way. And other than this, barn team's always a bit scary since we have King. Should be all right. Definitely want to show off that these Dian cards on. I feel like we've been doing pretty good this match, but pretty much everyone is full HP. I was mainly talking about Dian. She's barely been attacked. She did get frozen that one turn. Let's see. I do, do I want to show off the Dian or... Hmm. Oh, Dian's going to get... Actually, the shield will tank that, won't it? Yeah. Any buffs on the enemy? No. That's okay. I think, I think we might show off the Dian ultimate there. Probably should have checked her ult level too. I'm 50%, uh, actually no, I'm like 80% sure she's 2-6. 200,000, yeah. <laughs> Bit lackluster without a 6-6 six, six ult. And, oh wow, speaking of the barn team, one thing I would like to bring up though is I'm really, really hoping the slime collab comes out in this next week because if not, I do have to go away for another week in the next fortnight. So if that doesn't happen, I may end up missing out on the slime collab or at least being able to upload stuff for the first week. I believe the way they're doing it on the JP version is they are saving some stuff for the second week, certain boss battles, stuff like that. I think one of the Holy Relics as well is blocked until the second week, so kind of have to decide who you want to get them for in the beginning. So really, really hoping they end up giving that one out real, real soon, but we should know within the next couple days whether or not that's going to happen. Barn team here, though, having the buff disable is really going to help us out in this one as well. But you can keep up the, shink, the king shields, should I say. Should be good to go. Two pretty fortunate. Mm. I always forget, the Arthur Stance card is such a good card in my opinion. Not only is the Arthur's tanking ability just absolutely insane, but the removing ultimate gauge 
super, super, super just, I don't know, so underrated in my opinion. Having to attack him in certain characters like him where you're forced to attack them every single turn just ends up making it impossible to rush ultimates. It's probably a bit easier for characters like Deanne, but hey, we'll see how we go. Putting up this one here, just because we are going to take some damage in this turn, I can almost guarantee you as well, he end up using the gift card. It's a nice card in RNG as well. Exactly what we want, pretty much. Is he going to get the barn ultimate in this turn? That could be... That could be a little scary. He still has another turn. He has an orb left, so... Yeah, definitely gone. Is that level 3 gift? Oh, jeez. Uh, hmm. I think we just go for this. Try and get as strong a sh shield possible. Get as much damage as possible. I doubt we'll end up killing anyone. And getting the Yan taunt up. Not like anyone's single target here except for Terry. If they all end up surviving, she can maybe stop the ultimate removal from happening on King, but moment of truth here. I mean, we could just have the King shield end up blocking all of the damage for the ultimate. Highly, highly doubt that though. And with the fact everyone's got buffs on them, he's gonna have the rupture effect. Oh uh, yeah. Okay, hold on. So everyone tanks that there, Dan got a little bit of HP back. Let's see what it looks like after this turn. Hmm. Half of her damage she recovered. Pretty good. And let's see. Yeah, look at that. Wow. That is so insanely good. Let's hoping he doesn't forfeit here. We will <laughs> Oh, I knew that was gonna happen. I knew it. And since they had enough HP to take the first hit of the king, we could get the damage up. That would have been like a two, maybe three mil attack stat. What a shame, what a shame. Mm. No buff cards we really have to worry about. I think I'm going to go for this here. Really hope they don't have dodge food. The melee team is one of the only teams in the game that actually uses dodge food. I called it. How did I know? How did I know? That's okay. At least we can see Dan getting attacked just a little bit more. Could possibly rush a King Ultimate in this next turn as well. Oh, and if only we had attacked him, we could have had the three debuffs on our team activating the Kusak passive. Then he could have had the three attack buffs for his next turn, and we could have used the buff removal on King and gotten the extra damage. That would have worked out so well. I should have I should have trusted in my gut and gone for the double attack. This guy is taking absolutely forever to do his turn though. Hmm. He applied the debuffs on us anyway, so he should be good by the time it comes back around to us. Let's see, and then let's go... No one has alt control except for Kusak, and we have the torn up suite. So we'll go one, two, and three. And let's see how this goes. Kusak as well is very, very fun. You know, I only really use him in the bird raid. And same for Deanne, I feel. Deanne upon her release was very, very underplayed. And I do see there are definitely a couple flaws in her. You know, she is supposed to be the best tank in the game since she's the most recent tank and she's a festival character, but sometimes she just can't tank. But if you use her in activities like the Bird Raiden, you end up getting her to her full potential. You'll just see exactly what I'm talking about, where you can throw out pulverized cards. I've had it with the first floor on the final phase where the bird has like the infinite resistance and you're forced to use cards with the power strike effect or you're forced to have melee with all of his buffs to crazy amounts of damage. You can easily have the end still do damage in that phase and oh my god she's taking so much damage this turn and she's still living well back to back forfeits they trade a meliesca team okay that women doing it pretty well on the out seeing department hard rng as well this is one of those teams where it's not a super big thing you have to worry about i'm going to go for this since he does have access to the rank up and i feel like sometime within these next couple months and definitely within the next year Especially in PvP, I feel this could be not so much in PvE since substats and whatnot work very differently and damage caps on bosses and stuff is a little bit different in PvE. But in PvP, definitely see Eskinor falling off very, very shortly. The the early release of his Holy Relic shafted him so, so hard and then making it just a terrible Holy Relic. The CC is nice and all, especially if you want to use him as an association. He's probably one of the better associations in the game. But man, he just doesn't make the cut anymore. He can't crit and when he doesn't crit, he just doesn't deal damage. And with that, I think we pretty much win this one. Extra damage from the shock. Going to seal out the deal. This Elaine as well. I know pretty much no one would have summoned for this lane, but using him alongside the OG King and being able to proc the full 3D boss and everyone to get his passive 
in one card on the first turn. So, so fun. That's the main reason I used it for this showcase as well, because it's not a unit you're going to see all that often, and <laughs> buying cosmetics for a character like that always hurts the soul, but hey, that's what you got to do. Barn on the back. We could actually end up losing to him. Uh, let's... I believe four ultimate gauge is enough to remove the ultimate, and then we have the two extra DNA cards, so you guys know I'm going to win this one. And I know I'm probably late to this one, but I've actually had a little bit more time to go ahead and play Elden Ring, and I think I'm around... I think I'm around 22, 23 hours into the game at the moment. Definitely starting to like it a little bit more now that I understand the game a little bit more. The first five hours was... You know how long it took me to figure out that you could sprint by holding space? That was like an hour's worth of gameplay, but... Understanding it all, I just beat Radon, which is the only boss I've beaten in one attempt, and I know that's probably not the biggest reflect since he's not really a difficulty boss, it's more of a spectacle kind of thing. We are getting absolutely floored right now. But yeah, absolutely loving the game. Do plan on playing it quite a bit more in any of my spare time. Let's... I think the only way we're getting the King Shield is going for this one here, but... I said initially when I started playing the game that I didn't think it was going to be... Well, at this point in time in my life, Breath of the Wild is probably my favorite game. I didn't think the Elden Ring was going to pass that, but who knows, but maybe by the time I actually finish the game, it is a game as well I feel like I'm going to enjoy heaps playing a second and a third time. It's just all the knowledge and running through the bosses, spending a little bit more time exploring, stuff like that. Super, super good game. I'm sure most of you guys have played it by now. Yes, I know I'm very, very late to playing and to actually finishing it as well. No King Shield in that turn, hold on. Could we maybe... We maybe bring this back if I try going. Hmm. Might go for this. See, I really want the king ultimate. At the same time. I don't know. Don't want to take the go through ultimate. Obviously, we're trying to rush king. We want to remove that one. No merges can happen as well because of the silver card next to it. Yeah, get the DN ult. Oh, no, I didn't think we had dissolve on us. Oh, no, I'm throwing so hard. I was too busy rambling about Elden Ring. Ugh, that's my bad. Still though, if we didn't end up getting another king card in that turn, we could potentially bring this back. We've got the double king cards in this one. There it is. A lot of ignites on us as well, so this is going to do crazy damage if it breaks through. Everyone's still alive though. Shock ended up doing quite a bit of damage as well. Let's go. One, two. We'll end up removing the go through ultimate again, and hopefully we can seal it out. Granted, he has had Betty, uh, pretty bad card RNG in his respect, but if we could end up pulling this one through, I would be very, very happy with that. Yeah, look at the damage on that one. So I know, once again, it is type advantage. Still really, really impressive. Maxed out on our Ignites now. <laughs> Double King card. As long as King survives, we're fine. Why didn't I put up a Deantor on that turn? I'm throwing so, so hard. What did I do in that turn that made me not want to put up a Deantor? Look at Deanne though, full HP throughout the entire match, and King's definitely dead there. Uh, should have gone for the taunt, that's my bad. There we go, that just about does it for today's video. Going flawless all the way till the end there, it's, we got out CC and against a pretty strong team. I really love those teams with like the Kyo, the Dosio, where those are either super fast matches in the respect where you either win or you instantly lose. So, once again, absolutely loving using the Nutabiel. Worked really, really, really well with Dian. I don't know why I didn't use the stance a little bit more in those final couple turns. King's an AoE character, so that's the one thing about this Dian is once you build her up, she tanks so well for herself. But in PvP, there are so many AoE characters that usually end up having all of your side characters die way, way before she does. So that's about does it for today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed. Please hit the like button, subscribe. It really means a lot to me, and I'll see you guys for some more Grand Cross content.